Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're gonna be looking at something very unique and honestly, it really caught me off guard. This is gonna be a multiple opponents uh, MMA match. So it was two fighters versus one. I believe it took place in Spain, but uh, nonetheless, it did give me a an insight of uh, an attack when there is multiple opponents, the pros, and the cons now obviously the cons are going to be that you know you're outnumbered but there is some positives and we're going to be looking at it so let's uh, begin without any further ado so here you see the lone fighter against the two one tries to take his back and tries to grapple while the other is trying to throw knees now let's take a look at this takedown uh, I found it very interesting. It's just pulling with the hands and taking him down, what you call a body lock takedown. Now, if we were to look at the terminology of morote gari, which means reaping with both hands, this would technically apply, but without grabbing the legs. Uh, the reason why I'm trying to dive into this is because, of course, now this is banned and a lot of people will try to make up you know, no legs uh, additions, much like the uh, kata guruma. Now, this one here, I found it interesting. It's a simple body lock takedown, but it can qualify in terms of terminology as morote gari. Now, here you see he's trying to take the rear naked choke, but he doesn't quite have his hooks in, and thus he is easily shrugged uh, off. The other fighter tries to uh, go in and takes his back into the cage so they can corner him obviously but um, the trained fighter or the lone fighter seems to be very agile um, I don't believe they're very much high level here you see a great clip on the uh, left side of the one of the fighters he almost knocked him down he tries to finish the job here but um, the other guy again tries to take his back um, he has one arm hooked. He's trying to kind of like do a rear naked choke. I'm not fully sure, but he only has the arms rather than the neck. And again, he is shrugged off again. Uh, now, that's one of the positives of being outnumbered. Uh, so first here you see uh, he's trying to take this. Uh, again, judo's classical moves will always triumph and you'll always see them no matter where you go at the highest level at the lowest level but here if you notice the hooks are in before you try to work any strangle always make sure the hooks are in meaning you have full control of the waist and the torso and then from there you try to work just like Gordon Ryan says you create an axis uh, pre preferably diagonal on the back and from there you work and here you see <laughs> he knocks his own partner let's see it in slow motion so he goes for like an uppercut and accidentally knocks his own partner uh, out uh, as you can see he just drops dead weight now it's just one against one and that's one of the positives of being outnumbered and i'll talk about it a little bit later so he takes his back clearly he's far more skilled than him Puts him in a turtle position, locks one of the arms, and grabs an ude garami, a brutal ude garami with the other. The arm is clearly shattered, as you can see, and he keeps trying to fight. So, you know, that's a good attitude or a good fighter's attitude in terms of survival. But here you see it's finished and the fight is officially finished. And he did a great job, in my opinion. So, um, Let's talk a little bit about Ude Garami, so tangled uh, arms. is the first technique in the uh, joint lock techniques in Kodokan Judo. So there's many ways you can do it. You can do it with the palm facing up. As you can see, it's all about leveraging the elbow up and locking the wrist. And from there, you get a tremendous amount of pressure on the shoulder. So that's not the only way you can do it. So. Uh, as you can see here, it's going to take a toll on the shoulder. Another way you can do it is with the palm down, also called Kimura, uh, after the great fighter Masahiko Kimura. And um, again, it takes 
a toll on the shoulder but in the opposite direction uh, there's many angles you can attack this uh, joint lock and that's what makes it such a great technique on the lowest and the highest level you see it everywhere jiu-jitsu judo mma obviously and uh, it works it clearly works and it's very dangerous so uh, another way you can actually do it is with a straight elbow in case they don't want to give you an angle you can actually attack the elbow you lift and leverage up now here you see from the stand up how you can actually get it and take the fighter down and roll them over and you can apply the lock so another thing I want to talk about is Ashi Gatame as you saw and we'll see it again is that he locked one of the arms with his legs and that alone can be a submission so Ashi Gatame which means uh, leg hold and you are putting someone down and keeping them and locking their elbow with your legs as you can see you can attack with the uh, with both legs depending on the direction you can have two effects here you see you are putting a tremendous amount of pressure on the elbow while there's another one where you can actually target the shoulder here you see you uh, when you attack with the other leg you can have an opening with the hips and it can become like an ude garami type effect and you can uh, lock the shoulder and dislocate it you can also apply a strangle from this position as they just showed one of the greats that applied this submission is olympic champion hitoshi saito and as you can see here he's applying downward pressure on the elbow and kind of like an arm bar and another one where he actually rotates the arm and applies pressure on the shoulder here you see he drags him on the mat and then uses the outer leg to actually apply pressure on the shoulder absolutely brutal so it's a very underrated uh, submission rarely used but uh, as you can see it's very dominant especially when there is a transition from the stand up to uh, the ground here you see another one and then he just puts downward pressure so the leg that's towards the legs uh, it targets the elbow while the one that's on the outer part it targets the shoulder if you know what I mean so here you see he targets both arms but he goes for an Ude Garami and it was absolutely brutal now as you can see there are pros and cons for being uh, outnumbered the first one uh, being as a positive is that one fighter will get in the way of the other one if you notice this so uh, one of the ways that uh, if you have to fight and you're just standing there and there's no way out is use one of them as a shield almost as you saw uh, he knocked his own partner out because he was standing in his way and you have to constantly be on the move uh, one of those Aikido drills that they do if you saw Shioda in the past he was constantly on the move and running and going in between them the second one is uh, like I said be constantly on the move and using someone as a shield obviously if there's weapons involved it's it's a different thing it's a different topic but I'm talking about you know, hand to hand combat so I hope you enjoyed this I'll leave the full fight in the description below this was Shadi and thank you for listening.